Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, finally back with more Great Ace Attorney. Uh, sorry, I haven't streamed in a week or so. Um, real life got in the way, but I'm finally ready to start Case 4, Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro, Investigation Part 1. So my thoughts on this case is, like, every single case we've done so far has had a different method of, like, investigation. So, like, the first one was the typical classic trial that we're all used to. Second was the deduction that they introduced. Third one had the, um, not so much investigation, but they had the, they introduced the jury system and, um, kind of questioning multiple witnesses at once, like multiple witness testimony. So I'm wondering what this one's going to introduce now, if every single case in this game is going to be different, which I find interesting because it keeps you on your toes, like nothing's ever the same. But let's go. Ooh, paintings. Tokiori, Bokua Omono Dayo, Watoson. Watoson, Mizua, Monogeni Kubio Fri Ita. Whatever the many sir Jikenwa, Hontoni, Sorena Subet and Nangaroka. Sono Rangavani, Daremo Shirumono Nai, Monogatariga, Kakurete Yukamo Shirenai. Which case are they talking about? Harbuti. <laughs> oh, there's a dead lady. Is this a new case or an old one that he's reminiscing? It's Jack the Ripper. I don't know. Okay, back in Big Ben. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Naruhuro? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms are so luxurious, I felt like we were staying in a palace. And with all the gas lights twinkling, it was brighter than day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time on the SS Burya, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. That's cute. Oh yes, it really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except... When I learned that we owed three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops. Sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. Dang! I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. Ugh, I really am sorry. But we earned money from, um, the Gilded, so... Shouldn't be- Oh my gosh! Kirby, thank you so much for the 21 month sub! Hey, Monkivs, good morning! Happy Wednesday! Was it Wednesday for you? No, if it's morning for you, then it's probably Thursday for you. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Hope you've been well. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire stipend will be used up in 10 days or less. Ugh, London is a scary place. Ah, uh, good morning to you at this early hour. I don't know who this is. I don't remember what voice I had for him. Oh, yes, um, we uh, well. Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Susan's son is amazing. She doesn't bat an eyelid, even in the presence of the imposing Lord Strongheart. What voice did I give him? Well, uh, I don't- I'm just gonna make- Yes, I believe you had very comprehensive initiation into our British courtroom practices. Oh, yes, it was very eye-opening, thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Naruhuro performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of the events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider this test passed. Oh, no longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Um, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. 
Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case already? Nothing tr trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? Did I give him a deeper voice? I think I did. What up, JT? Whoa, I'm getting ads. I'm getting ads? What? No, I don't want ads. No. Hey, Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday. The capability of the defendant has no art depression time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to profit judgment. Well, in my face, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. <laughs> Saw an ad when I joined in. What? No! I didn't turn any ads on! And what? How do I turn that off? I don't want ads. <laughs> I'm gonna eat mac and cheese and buy a Tesla now. <laughs> Dude, now I want mac and cheese. I want mac and cheese and chocolate cake. Oh, that's what I want. I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Twitch has recently been, yeah, mac and cheesy toast. <gasps> oh man, mac and cheese on top of some thick buttered toast? How would that taste like? Mmm. Mr. Naruhodo, it's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. I'm gonna give him a deeper voice. Well, you need not let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGill passed away! <gasps> he, was, he was the one burning in the carriage. Immediately following the trial. No. What? Mr. Mr. McGilded is... Dead? I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. <laughs> Everyone's burning! McGilded's death. I don't understand. What happened? How could he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the old bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus has been wheeled into the courtroom. An omnibus? <laughs> yes, of course. That was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGillet had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already. The police have identified a corpse found inside the charged shell of a carriage as that of McGilded. That's awful! The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. And how could that have happened? Chocolate cake is young, but chocolate is like crack for me, so I gotta stay away trying to learn how to make mochi instead. <gasps> You're gonna learn how to make mochi? Yo, that's awesome! Ah, oh, I love eating mochi. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> that is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilda did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. Well, I'm going to make the tracks now. Do you just time for inspection? Sorry, what inspection? you are going to examine the omnibus in case you are told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. An inspection of the omnibus. Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But then who was Mr. McGilda talking about? Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. I feel like it's gonna come up again though, and we're gonna be like, oh, this is a true story about McGilded. Poor Mr. McGilded. Also, I have a feeling that this case, um, the girl with pink hair is gonna show up again, and so is that, um, what was her name? The blonde hair from Last Child. I feel like they're gonna show up again. 
And she's gonna be like, I hate adults. It's like, you're turning into an adult. She's gonna be like, no. <laughs> so how did you find your first taste of our country, Supreme Court? Oh, well, um, I don't know. I mean, it was, wow. Mr. Naruhoto means that the whole experience was steeped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, Susato-san has such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. How does she read his mind? The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate. But your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? I'm doing Eureka? What's Eureka? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but the case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> Is something funny? No, no, my apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to the exceptional talent, wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I've prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? New case. Uh, you don't know Eureka is in- Oh, Eureka in 14! I was like, I've never heard of Eureka in, um, in the real world. I've been meaning to do it, but I- it's so confusing, I haven't done it. <laughs> Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? No! <laughs> don't tell me, it's a murder and the trial starts in 10 minutes! <laughs> and don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last assignment. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did, did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died as yet. And the trial will not be today. There's plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. <sighs> so the trial's tomorrow, then. Is everything alright? Oh, yes. I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Nadahoto. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Mr. McGilda's trial. Ah yes, I knew, of course. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. No one saw the murderer! A wild Alex appeared! Hey Alex, how you doing? Happy Friday! And not Friday, whoa. Happy Wednesday! Ah, oh, Kirby, thanks for the virtual hugs! Pause check. It's not so bad, but it is a time sink. Probably take you a few weeks. Eureka's not the randomized dungeon, right? Eureka's a totally different thing. Because I think I tried the randomized dungeon thing and I died after like five levels because I didn't know how to heal. <laughs> Once again, there's currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh, if the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendants. Yes, that's right. Uh, here we go again. Randomized Dungeon is Palace of the Dead. Yeah, I tried Palace of the Dead. Wish it was Friday? Me too. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise that you begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until court sits. Last time he mentioned 23 hours, he said there was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Nadahudu. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh, um, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. 
They're still bringing up Kazuma! <laughs> I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, um, Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world worked so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Oh. Another thing. Continue. On the way here, on the steamship, he said something to me. The ship Important that I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He, he never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done. You are the time. Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Naruto, what's all this about? Mr. Asaki never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. It's because I'm special, Susato. <laughs> I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. Whoa, hello. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of your case. He'll be able to apprise you of the details. How long has he been there? So, I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. I feel like his voice was deeper last time. There's something very important that I have to do. Kazuma-sama, what did you mean? Oh, I forgot she liked him. Whoopsies, I shouldn't be too mean to her. I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we had better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. He looks like he has french fries. He does have french fries! He has taters and crisps. Can I examine stuff in here? Look at these menacing metal giants facing each, uh, each other across the room. I believe they're... yes, they're suits of armor. Oh, right. I thought maybe they were like the lion dogs we have in Japan guarding shrine gates. No, not at all. In fact, in Europe, suits of armor like these are always possessed by evil spirits, you know? What? <laughs> no, they're not. And they roam around in the middle of the night. Really? Is there nothing you don't know, Mr. Sato? This book tells me everything I need to know about everything. If you're ever unsure, just ask. Where does she get that incredible tome? If it knew everything about everything, that would be very... Give me your crisps, man. Give me your fish and chips! Just look at all the naughty books. No, I don't want the books. I want the fish and chips. Uh, packed together on these shelves. They go from floor to ceiling. And they're all books that you couldn't hope to come by in Japan. It's like a dream. Yes, a very bad dream. They're not all about British law, either. There are books about judicial systems of the other Western nations. France, Germany, Spain, Holland? What about Russia? Why do you ask? I was wondering about the Lord Chief Justice, how you say wardrobe in Russian. What do you- <laughs> Why you gotta bring that up, man? What do you think? I think perhaps it's a thought best abandoned. How do you say wardrobe in Russian? I mean, do you blame her for liking him? No, I don't, but he likes me better. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fishy toast, chippy toast, ha ha ha. I'm so thirsty. Um, can we trouble you? What do you think? Ah! Um, uh, lovely weather, isn't it? Wait, I should give him a. D I can't really do a range of deep voices. Should I give him a nasally voice? What's the way I've got to do with anything? <laughs> ah! What you mean, you young Japanese upstart? So frickin' about the wedding, don't get every inch of jet eat out of your head, you know? Oh, that's too stupid and annoying. Ugh, but this is a stop sign told me it's foolproof. I'm a busy man. I'm a very busy man. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you to talk to. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying, hmm? I haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the big wings these days. And all because some bumpkin who's here on a jaunt from a country I've never even heard of. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe you've been introduced. This is Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, a defense lawyer. Eh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant, Su... Eh? 
It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? <laughs> ah, that is magic fish and chips. The fish regenerates every bite. Oh, that would be awesome. Whoa, he's Jesus. Whoa, he has chips. Like a never-ending pizza. Mmm, never-ending pizza sounds good. It is unseasonably fine, I grant you. London winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable. How did she pull that off? So, <clears throat> Lord Strongheart asked me to fill you in the case. The name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson? Um, Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with susan san Does this detective's name mean something to her? Inspector Gregson. Inspector Gadget. Inspector, are you perhaps... THE Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Miss Susato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him. Very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he features prominently in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, in that publication. What's it called again? Rance Magazine? That's right. Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy wonderful, friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Wait, what's the name of the uh, detective in Sherlock Holmes? Oh, wow. I don't remember. Moriarty is his nemesis, but who's the inspector? Lestr... Isn't it Lestrade? But wait, that's the last name of the thief girl in this game. I don't know. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with the goods from time to time. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You've earned his... Oh, pfft, I read that wrong. You've earned his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those are his own words. That's his highest praise. Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see? That he is not. In fact, that magazine, my name is known all over London town now. That's great, isn't it? Hmm. <clears throat> I have to admit that the thought I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wants to shake my hand, my reputation at the yard went to the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it's not. There's nothing more sinister than a man on the street. People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure. Rumors? Are, are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in stories. The fame's gone to his head. Stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Jim Gordon? <laughs> That's Batman! Yo, did you see the new Batman trailer? It looks good. I am excited for it. Give me the Riddler, man. The last time we had a Riddler in the movies was um, Jim Carrey's Riddler. That came out with um, Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face. J. Jonah? J. Jonah is Spider-Man. Did you see the new Spider-Man trailer? Dude, I'm really hoping Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield also come out as Spider-Man. Really hoping. But I feel like they also touched up Alfred Molina's face a lot in that trailer. It looks kind of fake. Oops, sorry. But it looks good. It looks exciting. Like I said, they whisper, so I can't exactly... So I can't catch exactly what they're saying, but I know what folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying. As sure as eggs is eggs. I get the feeling this detective could be very hard work. Oh dear, perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we're concerned at the yard, it couldn't be a simpler. <clears throat> oh dear, that probably means... And as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. A young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road where she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she's laid up in hospital, unconscious. That's despicable! What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever it was um, off with a suicide to take down, would you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Nadhuddle. 
Brace yourself, Rinosuke. You've angered her now. Anyway, after some uh, something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So, there must have been something left at the scene that led you directly to the culprit. Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question. Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Barak von Zvanzix. Why? No. <laughs> Sounds like you've heard of him then. Oh yes, we are very familiar with Lord Van Zeeks. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Reaper of the Bailey. No more superhero movies, but okay, but Batman. It looks good. It doesn't look like the cheesy Justice League movies that came out. It looks like a decent, proper Batman movie. Spider-Man is going to be like, oh my gosh, look at the glitz and glamour that Marvel's like putting money into. I'm actually kind of like, I'm actually excited for um, Shang-Chi also. Because uh, Tony Leung and Michelle Yeoh are in there. So gotta watch it. Free Guy's a great movie. Oh yeah, Free Guy's out. I haven't watched that. <gasps> I need to watch Green Knight. So many movies I have to watch, so little time. Lord Barak Van Zeeks, who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGilda told us about him before the trial, didn't he? Why Van Zeeks stands for a prosecutor to call the crew sacrificial lambs? And they were trying to try in which he's been prosecuted, he has been damned. Whoa, that rhymed! This Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty, is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector. That in yesterday's trial against Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Naruhodo secured a verdict of not guilty. <sighs> and what of it? Oh, well, um, I think... That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah. Mounds McGilded came a cropper in the omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? What? What are you saying? Look, if Van Zeeks could get the dirt, on st uh, dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work in miracles, he works in magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long look about that if I were you. Think, wow, I can read. Are we really supposed to believe that? Oh man, it has a great crunch when he munches into it. Right, well I filled you when I was requested and I'm very nearly out of chips. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Pride Road, you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place? That's correct, Mom. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You've branded him a criminal already? He's a good ass. Shaking like a leaf in a cell he is. It'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate 53. Three, speak to the jailer. He'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thank you. Hmm. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Naruhodo? To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent... You could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in a cell. And I for one wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So, if I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try, so I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? 
After all, I'm your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Jelly, you need to voice act the crunches. <laughs> How do I do that? Crunch, crunch, munch. See you in the crime and prison. Let's go to the prison. Because I want to see who the defendant is. Wow, this is dank. So these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. Feels like, just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Narahodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop hiding in the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I... Uh, wait. Am I a cat as yet with no name? Call me by a number, it's only imperfectly unjustly irreasonable and just answer. Mr. Naruhuro, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea, but I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints was in Japanese. What? Does he look familiar? Did you do the FF14 event? It gives you a free mount. No, I didn't. I didn't know there was an event. I should do it. Um, excuse me, but shh, okay. They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening, even now. I, I can sense it. Um, right. So who, there you are. You've got to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it, you're a ghost. <laughs> a ghost? We mean you no harm, prisoner-san. Are you... Japanese, by any chance? This is... This is... BEYOND MY WILDEST DREAMS! Who are you? Your eyebrows are interesting. Forgive me for that outburst. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's... Fine, we were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown, and here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land! So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damn dark hellhole was a, a most monumentally moving moment! Who are you? Who could have guessed that this new client, Lord Strongheart, is assigned to us? would turn out to be a fellow Japanese. Ah, what compassion my fellow countrymen show. To dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. He's a student? Noble, nurturing, never failing, Nippon. Uh, first class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. Also, what's the new mount you get? Depending on the animal or the mount, I'll I'll think about doing it. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can, I will! Shut, stay, sullen, and silent! Who are you? I'm not quite sure I understand what it means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I am a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryudosuke Naruhodo. And I am Naruhodo-san's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably, notoriously named Natsume. Soseki Natsume. I can't think of a pun. Soseki Natsume. Soseki... Wait, court record. I need to see how old he is. He's 
scholar sent to Britain by the Japanese government to further study his English. The defendant accused of attempted murder, to find Grex in this 44, detector inspect detective inspector in charge of Scotland Yard's investigation of the case. Stern and single-minded in his approach, great lover of fish and chips. Okay. Polar bear that has the ability to create a giant snowflake? Okay, I'm gonna have to do that. You're older than him. <laughs> JT is 25. I wish I was still 25. <laughs> well, it's like a nuts bit. But yeah, I'm a year older than him. No, wait. If it's February 19th in the game, I guess you could say I'd be 30... 35. Because my birthday passed. Sosaki Natsube, son? What an unusual name. Call me Sosaki, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Miss Naruhoda-san. No, no, no. Don't be so prosaic. It's much more refined than that. Wait, then does he speak in haikus all the time? No, no, no. Don't be... So prosaic, it's much more refined than- Nope, he doesn't speak in haikus all the time. And haiku? That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. Yeah, it doesn't. If it makes you feel better, I'm older. Born in 84. Oh, snap! <laughs> I mean, I enjoy being in my 30s. The only thing that sucks is that, uh... I get indigestion more easily. Other than that, 30s is cool. <laughs> First I had to suffer that misery, and now this! It's beyond the pale! Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No, I mean, I've had a great interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh, but just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean you can do it. No. What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. I see. Only the other day, I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered, I tendered a blank piece of paper. <laughs> Wise words on white washing. You must be a man of great standing. Oh yes, so I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. I played five minutes of ultimate with my nephews and I was dead on the ground out of breath. <laughs> Yeah, also your stamina just drops, unless you're a professional athlete and you keep up with your training, it's just... You can't. Also, it's harder to stay up late at night. Like, it kills me to stay up past 1 o'clock and I'm just like... <gasps> yeah, can't do it. <laughs> the accusation against you. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Sosaki-san? I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no. No, no, it's all right. The woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife! Right before my eyes! I like that face he's making. <laughs> before your eyes? You mean, you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's incredibly, inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient. So Sosuke-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about the case. About the case. It was a cursed evening just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I went to the bookshop to buy some books and I was on my way back to my cursed lodgings. Sure the bookshop wasn't a cursed too? As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat she was, and just as I was about to overtake- Whoa! Oh! 
Oh, Haas, thank you so much for the follow. Also, happy Wednesday or Thursday, wherever you are. Ugh. She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed into the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. <laughs> that face. How terrible. I called that to the woman, but she didn't move. It, it was like a... Ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. <laughs> Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran, as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's not good. They'll, they'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Soseki-san, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? And a young woman at that? I'm diffident, shy, timid, unsure, I can't talk to people! I see... A young woman, unknown to Soseki-san. And at the time it happens, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably... Apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Ah, oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else at the street on the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm? What conundrum? How did she get stabbed? Jelly laughs at Sosaki being scared to death. But that face was funny! What do you mean, suzozo san What's the conundrum? Well, if what Sosaki-san has to uh, just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did! But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit. Ah, you! What did you just say? Nothing, I, I didn't say anything. This. Oops, perhaps I thought that a little loudly. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Soseki-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, she's right. It... It was him. That accursed great detective, he led the police to me! Of all the bad luck! Accursed great detective? Could it be? I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live! With his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness? Brash, big-headed, busybody, be gone! Oh my god. May you be cursed until the end of your days, Herlock Sholmes! I knew it! Mr. Mr. Sholmes! <laughs> if Mr. Sholmes says you're in, you're guilty, then you must be! <laughs> oh, Susatou. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a silver sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me! This is the police! Put the weapon down! Yes, it was a thin sliver, and yes, it was hard! That's what she said. But I wasn't eating a weapon! <laughs> Disgusting, dietary, discrimination, devils! Also, I'm surprised that he would be eating hard cheese, because wouldn't he be lactose intolerant? I don't know. Anyways, you clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That Herlock Sholmes! It's actually just Herlock Sholmes. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detec detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife wielding madman. Me, this weak, stooped kitten of a man. I wonder what great deduction process led him to his conclusion this time. He poses like that Japanese personality hard gay. 
Oh my, I haven't heard that name in so long, wow. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholm's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Susato, he did that to me two cases ago. Come on. Well, um, the thing is, I was, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were. That's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me in impossible English. Fiendish foreign film flattery. Oh, flim flammery. Well, we are in England. Can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, Yes, I do, and I'm fine. <laughs> no, that's, that's not... <laughs> Next thing I knew, I was in medical. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not fine now. Mr. Naruharu Esquire! Oh, he's twitching. Oh, you can just call me Naruharu. And when we're speaking English, a simple mister is more than enough. Oh, yes, um, alright. Yes, they've, they've really got me. This country is poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. He'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? That's what she said. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself, on a study tour. A uh, student? I've defended a case in the Old Bailey, only with the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. Why would you tell him this? I'm confused about what justice in, in this country even means. Oh, naruhara san I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. Where was your conviction from like, hey, he's innocent, right? Let's go question him. Oh, I'm not. And when he introduced him, he's like, I'm a lawyer. Yes. And now he's just like, I'm only a student. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I... Stop being so wishy-washy. You say you're gonna do something, then do it. But, but the arm man has the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire. It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. Ah, a keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, who do you mean? The lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. Goodness! Why, why do you say that? We knew this, Susato! Strongheart told us no one wanted to defend him. For the same reason as you noted before, when it happened. There was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them, someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said, and of course the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say, the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong. I studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these co people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They hate, all hate me. Yo, that's very true in this time too. So, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Sosaki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh yes, yes, thank you! I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you! Locum student Mr. Nato! <laughs> We should be going then, Naruhoro-san. We have a case to prepare for. 
Goodbye, crazy in jail cell, crazy man, student, literature man. <laughs> and then Jelly Toast is mean. I'm sorry. Racism goes both ways. He would probably do the same thing if roles were reversed. Yep, yep. Like, people say that America's pretty racist, and it is. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, Asian countries are so crazy racist. They're so racist that even if I go back to Korea, they will talk smack about me, even though I'm Korean. But because they'll be like, oh, you're Korean American. You grew up in America. You're not really Korean. But then they expect me to be like perfect Korean, know the culture, like speak perfectly without an accent, like learn how to read. It's just like, but I'm from America. What? It makes no sense. Whoops, sorry. <sighs> I had to move a wire. Whoops. That bicycle has a bent tire. There's a snowman! So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah! Look, Mr. Not a Little! Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know? By Mr. Naruhodo to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The, the helmet? Hehe, <laughs> of course. I'd have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your honey dreams come true. Kyle Chuma did a funny video, Are You Asian Enough? Oh, I'm gonna have to copy that link for later. Uh, okay, I'll just copy it now. Or I'll just click on the link and then press pause immediately so as not to get uh, in trouble from Kyle Chuma people. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't the tourist trail, I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been to the old cells, then. What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, the stone cold air of rejection. Take heart, London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That makes it worse somehow. Excuse me, I don't want to talk to you. I would like to examine the snowman. <laughs> I totally get the same treatment if I visited Korea. It's been about 10 years since I last went. Also, I have a cat. Oh, thank you for the cat. When's the last time I went to Korea? I went to Korea 2007. Holy crap, it's been 14 years. He <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. Looks a little creepy though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look! You'd need one if you were out here, out in this freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here would have missed this. <laughs> but the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know. You're right. Anyway. Even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. Also, I thought I thought that line, but she just answered me, which is kind of creepy. Let's go sometime. I really want to go back to Korea. I want to see how much has changed. I never want to hear myself speak Korean. <laughs> it's not that bad. You just have to keep speaking it and get used to it. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. <laughs> but that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, 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 I wasn't serious. Susato, you silly goose. Okay. Looking at the windows to see if they're like, oh, maybe someone looked at the windows. I want to investigate the cops last. Um. Ooh, what's this? The clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? 
And with a dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it's known as foggy London town. I can just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built, though. Aha! Yes! That must be the Crystal Tower, being built for the Great Exhibition that's to open in six months' time. Apparently, it's going to be very striking, glazed on all sides and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition in history, is it? I can't even begin to imagine it. Ah, I forgot. Oh, so maybe maybe the last case will deal with um, the... No, but that's in six months' time, so we won't get to see the Great Exhibition. Do you see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in winter using coal. The only chimneys I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. Do you think some of those houses could be on fire? Not at all. Well, even so. That much thick smoke bl billowing up to the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. Gosh, you may be right about that. And guess what? It does happen! And tons of people die! And then they pass an environmental law. Oh, look at the windows of that building there. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. Uh, there's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Oh dear, everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. Strand Street. That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks in decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonable levels, reasonably level floors. What did Strand Street have to do with that? Okay. I keep thinking I should examine the windows to get a hint coin, and I'm like, no, this isn't Professor Layton. Oh, a British bicycle, look! Although the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. Because it's fun and cool, do you know, scare? Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet off firm ground seems reckless. If you'd ever tried walking on stilts and fallen into a river, I know you'd agree with me. We'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. I feel like this bicycle is going to be important because it's like, it has a dent. Do we have, um... I don't think we have the, yeah, we don't have the uh, victim. Victim's profile. Wanted to see their outfit and all that. Okay, so the last thing to examine is the crime scene. That's one of the officers from Scarton Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wanted to close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no favors at all. Ugh. Okay. This patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Whoa, 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 why'd you come here? Oi, what are you foreigners doing here? Ah! Oh, um, uh, we, um, just the video conspiring with that mustache fell from Japan, are you? Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have you? Get out of here before I give you an item. Uh, and then what? Get on. Shoot us away like rats. Yes, we should give them a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. Whoa. Thank you, Windows Defender. Fun fact, Japan used bicycles during World War II to great effect to bypass road defenses by going through the forest and sneaking behind enemy line. 
I mean, yeah, bicycles are like cheaper than cars, more quiet than cars, like more mobile than cars. Bikes are great. I think we should all use bicycles and start using cars less, especially in uh, Southern California. Don't like all the cars. Scotland Yard! Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, Mom. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Poppy's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being alone and Bobby is all going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes around and rubs all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep, rubs in their windows with a long pole. Did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. 20 miles! Damn, they're fit. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama? <gasps> wow. That's far. On oh, foot. That's, that's definitely taking things a step too far. I'm gonna get Stark, of course. He has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my. And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it an in-between exactly, more alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle these jobs as well. We do have men killed all from time to time, I admit. You're overworking your police! Hire more people! Split the workload! I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Naruhodo. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. About the case. It happened around 5 in the evening two days ago, just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is, uh, still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Oh, wow. She's gonna be in a coma or, like, sleeping for the whole trial, and then she's gonna come out at the end and be like, Oh, this is what happened. Sorry, guys. Hee <laughs> hee. Boss check. Here's a map of the local area I have a time on me. You can take it if you want. Really? You sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defendant suspects your bits of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We're gratefully accepts. The location, the local map has been entered into court record. You know what I do? I inspect this! Briar Road, Meersham Street. Meersham Street? Calabash Road. And what's that street down there? Oh, we're on strands. Okay. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because you didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can't be sure no one else is present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we certainly can be sure. The snow didn't have footprints. How? Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It- what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Witnesses? Ah. It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There are witnesses now. Witnesses! Who are those witnesses, Inspector? 
a fellow and his wife. A man of, uh, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah. A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being Bobby. Captured him banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I have no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that will give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your digital assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that too. <laughs> oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The colors drained from his cheeks. Well, first I'm gonna ask about tomorrow's trial. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will say this. No London lawyer worth his salt will touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court for once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only person he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. Master criminals? The violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go down to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Matsunabe wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely. That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. Some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? Oh yeah, oh yeah, does this game have dual audio? Yes. Also, hey dear, how you doing? Happy Wednesday. Hope you've been well. Um, I have the audio on in Japanese. So whenever um, there are cutscenes, like in the beginning of a case, or when there's like interjections, like when people are saying objection or hold it or whatever, it's in Japanese. So yeah, you don't really get to hear a lot of, um, a lot of the out spoken audio though. You think I can't tell what's going on in the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it? Mr. Sholmes. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was a great I'm sure it was a result of one of Mr. Sean's inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! Ah! The man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere! Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case! Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He... he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! <laughs> I haven't seen a single cutscene in this game yet watching your stream. Oh no! There was one right at the very, very, very beginning. Uh, because, um, I started the fourth case. What is that man holding? Potato wedges? Mm-hmm. Fish and chips. So, um, fried fish and potato wedges, yeah. Ah! I haven't seen, seen this before. Oh yes, that's France Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. 
Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called Great Detective makes a mockery of all of us! If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Herlock Holmes tale at all! Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be fronted by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us as Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Oh, Susato, you, you have starry eyes. You're blinded by infatuation. Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Wait, why is it in a newspaper? It's in a magazine. They're saying like, oh, the adventures of um, Herlock Scholz is written up and like publicized. Well, I don't think we're gonna get any more useful information out of Detective. Oh wait, I'm so happy Miyuki Sawashiro is voicing the new upcoming Genshin character coming September 1st. She's the Electro Archon. I tried to get back into Genshin, except I don't know where to go for the next quest, and even though I turn on the like quest marker to like show the path, I, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm just like, eh, stop. <laughs> I do want to get back into it though. I feel like it's really fun. It feels like, um... It feels like, oh, what was that game? It feels like Granado Espada mixed with Breath of the Wild. And I like it, but... <laughs> you need to light up the map? Oh. <laughs> I should explore the map more. Whoopsies! <laughs> Mr. Narohoro, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes. What is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean... Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Look at those shining eyes, you can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did, he really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea- Ooh, it's Baker Street! <laughs> How do you know that? It's in the stories, of course! 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world! Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing stopping us from going, I suppose. We better try to find our way there before Susato-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll sell the carriage! So we're to have a reunion already. With the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Can we afford a carriage? A new location has been added. Prison. Sholmes is sweet. Let's go. Ooh, cutting! Speak. ありがとうございました。ここの2階でございます。それでは。どうも。ここがホームズさんの事務所なのですね。Fancy looking house. Remember how Gaius pulled out a sword from Musei chest? Miyuki Sawashiro's character ultimate, she pulled out a sword from her chest. Oh. I was thinking about um, Zillia the other day and I was like, man, I gotta grind like crazy for all the trophies. And I was feeling so sad about it. <laughs> she uses a spear, um, she's a spear user, but in her ultimate form, she uses a sword. Ooh. Finally, cutscene, but so short. Yeah, all the cutscenes are usually that short. So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels so real to be here somehow. There's so much crap! Oh my goodness. How does Susato's hair work? It's like, what? So she has long ringlets, but then she's also got this bun thing, but then she also has this, I don't know. Is it as described in the stories, Miss Susato? Um, Susato-san? 
many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I suppose they must have been, yes. I've never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seemed to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Madahuno? Oh, I suppose I can, yes. So if you don't mind... I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. Ah, she's obsessed. Take off your rose-colored lenses. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Then how did we get in? Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do I have Vishnu? Oh, it's her! Hello, it's a big new case for Mr. Schultz. Um, hello. Wait, aren't you... Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mr. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't that truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Scholz to take on his case. The King of Bowaria? King Wilhelm Gottstrike what? Wilhelm Gottstrike Sigismund von Ormstein, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Scholz for a moment and look over there! The tea is brewed and I freshly baked the cake as well. Ah! It's you! I knew it. Susato-san recognizes her too. Ah, there you are! The tea is up with you as well. I was looking forward to trying my spirit spoken in after. Welcome to your own world, well, your federal spirit establishment. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilda's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Who are you? How to get straight to your work when you've only just arrived in London? Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, uh, thank you. Is this tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet, me yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here and you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend a, a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Uh... Did Mr. Scholz tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Hurley? Mr. Scholz to you, Shirley? Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here in Mr. Solm's suite? Oh, silly me. I have not introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. I'm... My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. Time to... Inspect her. She's ten. An extraordinary young girl who lives with Mr. Solm's. She has a degree in medicine and is the author of a popular series of short stories. Is she the one publishing all of the Sholm stories? I thought that was someone else. Ah, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this... this can't be. Did... did you... did you say that your your name is... Wilson? What's the matter with Susototon? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. What are your names? Oh, um, I'm Yudosuke Naruhodo, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie Arudo. Got it. Susie? 
and Runo just more to this girl that meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. But before I converse, I'm a snoop! I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we arrived in this country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the grate. Ah, oh, it's so relaxing. I can't relax, not when there are so many interesting things on the mantelpiece. Oh, it's just as it was described in the stories. It is? Yes, exactly. Inside that Persian slipper, for example. Oh, my chocolate's for the elevens. Elevensies? And transfixed by that large jackknife. It's my shopping list for the market. Oh, it's not quite how I remember it being described in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Poor Susato-san, she looks crushed. Never meet your celebrity idols. Wait, um... Okay, I'll examine... Okay, I'll examine the middle first, then the left, then the right. Snoopy Toast, gotta snoop! A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, a bust of Napoleon. Ah, what an entrancing collection! This is the first time in my life that I've seen a lonely old shoe displayed as an ornament. Oh, those are all memories that Hurley has collected from his past cases. Really? Even a bust? Yes, that's right. When the moon takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. Eh? The poor defenseless emperor? Mr. Sholmes destroys it? Yes, and then he buys a new one. What? <laughs> Make it sound like he has the temperament of an insane sculptor. Ah, <sighs> how enchantingly bohemian of him. That's a waste of money, Susato. He's crazy. <gasps> uh, tea? It looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Naruhodo, you mustn't go around opening things. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. How did you come to that conclusion? Ooh, that chest. Contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells me you're not going to give us any clue about what they are. Why does this music kind of sound like Kingdom Hearts music? It sounds like, oh, here's a little Disney Mizzy mini game. There's all sorts of, there's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry, apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. I'll keep telling Hurley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He wanted to look something up once in those books a long while ago. But it was so tightly wedged in, he couldn't get it out. So he went and bought a new copy instead. How much money does this guy have? Okay, I think that's it for the middle. Let's check out the left. Ah, I've seen pictures of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Charles is renowned for his violin playing. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Naruhodo. Inspirational. I immediately started playing the koto, which was the closest Japanese stringed instrument I could find. What a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh yes, well, Papa, Papa was beaming. Papa was beaming when I asked him if he would buy me one. But after a while, he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. So now it's merely an ornament in my room. That must have been an awkward conversation. Whoa! Second-rate strings. What? What do second-rate strings mean? That reminds me. I need to get practice on my viola again. Ever since I moved, I haven't picked it up. What on earth is this huge over-the-top machine? That's the great an analytoscope. It can analyze anything, really. Anything at all. That's... Absolutely incredible. It's one of Hurley's inventions. It took him a whole year. He said he was going to help him with his investigations. What sort of things has he analyzed with it? Do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Uh oh. Why not? Apparently, on the evening he finally completed it, it suddenly occurred to him. I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. Oh dear. How about you, Dino? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? 
The only thing that springs to mind is this machine itself. <laughs> uh, anything with these speakers, vials? No, the skull. Okay, so now we examine the right side. That's a charming little white shelf, and full of charming little bottles, too. Oh, yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. I explode? Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, indeed. And as Holly always says, chemistry is an explosive science. Sorry? I agree. A single discovery can trigger an explosion of innovation all around the world. Or perhaps he just meant it literally. Either way, mental note, do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. Oh, there's a little duck bird on top of plates. What a beautiful English tea set, and so neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine, a cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. Tea made of herbs? That's right, I grow all sorts of herbs in the garden so I can experiment with different blends. One moment, don't go away, I'll brew a pot of special blend I came up with earlier today. She looks delighted, I only hope it's safe to drink. Okay, nothing here. Chair? Typewriter? Desk? What on earth is that big black lump over there? Ah, oh, that fascinating thing is called a typewriter. It's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. And wizardly quickly, too. Ooh, that sounds like it could be very useful for someone like me with terrible handwriting. Oh, she's got a unicorn statue, or is that a dog? And I can't tell. Okay, books. Okay, I think I've examined all I could. So now we will converse with Iris. How long have I been streaming? Almost an hour, Hannah. Okay. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the old Bailey. Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this? Ah, oh, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade and Toad, didn't you? Oh yes, that was, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Ginny. Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial disrupting gun-like contraption? Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm. Perhaps I should think about a fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Jenny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock, Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. You already said that. I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I won't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found the lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. You're only 10! Isn't... Isn't Holmes like 30-something? What the heck? Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? 10 at last this year! Well, what of your mother and father? Oh no, they're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Wilson. Wilson! Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm, ver I'm a very great fan. What? I'm a very great fan? Does that make grammatical sense? Whatever. Um, of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of France magazine! Yes! I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's 
right? Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see, and he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? I thought that, uh, Wilson was... John Wilson... Watson... was the one writing them. Is she related to him in any way? Is that why mom and dad aren't around? <sighs> I don't... Mm. Well, let's just keep going. Goodness! Last night he was telling me about all about a new case he just solved on the steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author. Yes, I'll let you in on the secret if you like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. The Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Sean's first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story. Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in Rance magazine... All written by me? Yes, on my wonderful and very modern typewriter. But... What all the stories I've ever read? Are written by a doctor of medicine, by Dr. John H. Wilson. Susan the Sun's getting more and more worked up. Ah, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true too. I am a doctor of medicine. No, at 10 years old? At 10 years old? Well, that's quite incredible. But, 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 Dr. Wilson, this is English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. Okay, so maybe she's not related to uh, the Dr. Wilson that died in the first case. I suppose it does, yes. Poor Susasa-san, she looks like her whole world has just fallen apart. Okay, so she's only like awestruck at the guys she meets, but when she finds out the author is a little girl, she's just like, eh. like, that's amazing! The author is a little girl! Come on! Your deductions just now. Um, about before. Yes, yes, what's on your mind, Rudo? Do tell me. How do you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Susan is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. More deductions? <laughs> First of all, I already knew that you were a lawyer, you know. After all, I met you yesterday at the old belly in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travelling ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that, you accepted the case against the particular protu blah, that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Rebro de Bailey. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited a local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. Ah. They used those stamps to keep a close eye on the comings and goings, you see. I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used by people visiting foreign inmates. So that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. Ha! 
However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face. So I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I see. But how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he'd caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Natsume. Now, Ruru has a fancy Japanese sword. <gasps> oh, it's Kasuma's sword! And I think your outfit is called uh, Kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man here in the court. And there was only one conclusion that those facts can lead me to. We both came here to ask Hurley about the case. Her deduction is perfect. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says that man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley's always stabbing his nose with a knife, you know. He is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Smart cookie. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on! That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You managed to... you managed a certain something of Mr. Sholm's delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You can tell us about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? Now! <laughs> oh, my throat is starting to hurt. So yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended the Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after a sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed on this quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, look stooped man. Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt. Sosaki-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. But it seems there are witnesses after all. Hurley used his great detective powers to determine the man's address. Address. Blah. It was a lodging room, very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man, shivering in fear. Ugh, Mr. Scholl's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow's too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend much, too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's not how justice works! That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh realities of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. Or just invest more money into the system, pay people more, hire more people, and then you could get stuff done, you know? I suppose it is, but in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Soseki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Oh, well, I expect Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume? Hurley said he's going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did 
you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, oh, goody. In that case... Give Gregson this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Iris's postcard has been entered into the court record. It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea. So come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Miss Naruhodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. Man, I kind of wanted to end here, but I do want to finish the rest of the investigation, like questioning. So somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with Iris's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. Wait, but you've held a guinea. Isn't a guinea more than- Oh, okay! To be continued. So this is a perfect place to stop then. So I think case four is going to be super long. Because we even have- we haven't even reached the trial portion yet. It's all like, um, in investigating. Okay. So, <clears throat> since my throat is killing me, I'm going to end this episode here, um, and I will pick this up tomorrow. I will make sure that I have nothing preventing me 